Hi, I'm Eddie. My name's Tommy, and we are the Skit Guys. And we're here to talk to you about Independence Day. Yeah, that's right. It was a dark time when the aliens invaded, but the president jumped up on that truck and said, we will not go quietly into the night. And we had our Independence Day. You were thinking of the movie. They made a movie. Why don't we talk about what the 4th of July is in a general sense? Sounds great. I will take point on that. You don't have to do that. 4th of July is a time of year when it's usually hot. That's it? It is hot. I mean, like, like seriously hot. Unless, I mean, unless you live in Canada or something. All right. Well, they don't have July 4th in Canada, just in America. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're saying that other countries' calendars go, like, from July 3rd to July 5th? No one's saying it isn't hot. I just think maybe we should give people a little more, you know, uh, a little more stuff. You know, like the important elements. So you want me to cover the periodic table? All right. I would just feed you, okay? So the 4th of July celebrates our independence from... Our parents. No. Yes. No! I celebrate every year the day I got out of Mama's house. Okay. We celebrate our independence from Great Britain that we won after fighting the Revolutionary War, all right? In which we were led by General... Contractors, which are much better than just a handyman. They just have a, a better general knowledge base of building. I'm gonna take a walk. Was it, was it General Motors? So Tommy, what do you think about when you think about the 4th of July? I'm just gonna try to help you. Just, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? 4th of July? Fireworks. Fireworks, yeah, good, good, fireworks. Okay. okay. Keep going, you think of fireworks. Yep, that's what okay. I think of too. Okay. No, no, okay, well, I mean you, go ahead. Nope. What else, what else do you think? Of? Fireworks. Okay, okay, let's let's think of something besides the fireworks. Uh, 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 bottle rockets, mm -hmm. uh, screaming memes, uh, M80s, uh, let's just try Roman to get candles. Fireworks. Okay, all right, can we just please get off the fireworks? Are you even American? You wanna know what the 4th of July is about? It's about freedom, but it's so much more than that. It's about opportunity. While we have the freedom to not agree with everyone on everything in this country, one thing we should all agree on is that we live in one of the most blessed countries in the world. This 4th of July, spend time celebrating the freedom you've been given. Celebrate the rights you have and don't let it end there. Appreciate it all year round and be glad our forefathers signed the Declaration of Independence so, so many years ago. You are so smart. Well, thanks. Hey, God bless you. Did somebody sneeze? And God bless America. Everyone stays where you need to go. Happy Fourth of July. Good morning, Venture Church. Welcome to worship. Please join us and sing as loud as you can. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, Jesus I sing for all that Who brings our chaos back into order? 
You can text us at 602-775-6398, or you can email us at officeattheventurechurch.com. You can get your prayer requests, your praises, and any other information you need to get to us in this way. Also, if you want to join the Pastors Connection, there's a lot of information on there. Please let us know as well. We also have Zoom every week on Wednesday nights. Our children and youth start at 6.30. Our men's and women's groups start at 7 o'clock. And again, keep checking in on each other. Keep um, making that phone call, that text, or that email just to see how each other's doing. Bless someone this week. And stay safe and stay healthy until we see each other again. Good morning, Venture Church. We are thrilled that you made the decision to join us today. It's going to be a great celebration. We're grateful to God on this 4th of July weekend for his blessing, for his hope, and for his help. Now, Gretchen and I are gone today, and we've invited a very special friend to come back and to bring the message today. Pastor Jim Roshkolb will be, will be sharing an inspiring message with you in just a few moments. But before we launch the service today, would you join me in a prayer? Almighty God, on this very special weekend, we thank you for our nation. We thank you for those who, who gave their lives for freedom. Oh God, would you bless this country? We bow our knee before you and we repent of our wickedness. And we ask you to heal this land, to turn the hearts of people back to you. God, thank you. We worship you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. Let's worship. Good morning. I'm Pastor Jim. Pastor Joel asked me to bring the message today as he and Gretchen are on a well-deserved vacation. But before I start the message, with everything that's going on around us, I thought I'd better bring you a warning. Beloved, there are only 173 shopping days left till Christmas. Now, I know that you think that's quite a long time, but let's look at this. This is the 4th of July weekend. All of a sudden, it's Labor Day. Then it's Halloween. Then it's Thanksgiving. And all of a sudden, Christmas is here. And I, I don't want you to be all upset because you have forgotten about your Christmas shopping. I have a very simple message this morning. It's nothing profound. And I'm sure nothing you have not heard before. The purpose of the message is to cause us to think. To cause us to think think about the things that have made America great. And to reaffirm the principles and the standards that have been the very foundation of the American soul. Now let me say at the offset, America's greatness has not been because of technological advancements or medical discoveries. America's greatness has had not been the result of powerful and influential leaders, nor is it because of great presidents, although we have had a few. 
Let me tell you what lies at the foundation and the heart of America's greatness. But at the same time, I must also say that we today are witnessing the destruction of this foundation before our very eyes. There are two things that have made America great. The Christian faith and God's holy word. George Washington said, it is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. Also, our 30th president, Calvin Cooley, said, and I quote, the foundation of our society and of our government rests so much on the teachings of the Bible that it would be difficult to support them if faith in these teachings should cease. Well, this is the 4th of July weekend, and we celebrate the signing of the Declaration of Independence. The signing of this document signifies America's official split from Britain's rule and marks the beginning of the American Revolution. Now, let me read one paragraph. You've heard this before, but I want you to hear it again. One paragraph from the Declaration of Independence. I hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among them are life, liberty, and their pursuit of happiness. Now, in this document, they recognize that God, our creator, is the one who has given us life, liberty, and the opportunity to pursue happiness. Let me be quick to add the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag, the belief that we are one nation under God. Now, as we consider America's greatness, allow me to give you two points. The first point is a guiding force, and the second is a guiding light. Now, this guiding force deals with the affairs of men. In Psalms 85, 13, righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the ways of his steps. Psalms 33, 13. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. When our forefathers landed at Plymouth Rock, they knew that their safe arrival was not because of the seaworthy ship or an experienced captain. Rather, they knew that an unseen hand had been the guiding force. They knew that the real captain in charge of this ship, the Mayflower, was God Almighty. There's a line from an old hymn. It's called The Unseen Hand, and it reads, There is an unseen hand to me that leads through ways I cannot see. While going through this world of woe, this hand leads me as I go. Aren't you glad, I am, that the guiding force, the Lord of heaven, is involved in the affairs of your life? Whatever your needs may be, be assured that God knows, God cares, and he is involved in your life. The guiding force works in the hearts of men. Psalms 139.23 Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Our nation and its greatness is because of men and women who have had a heart for God. From the time our forefathers came to this great land and throughout the years of its existence, God has used Christians to move this nation to accomplish great things. The spiritual heart of America is what has guided this nation to greatness. John Quincy Adams said, and I quote, The highest glory of American Revolution was this. It connected in one indissolvable bond the principles of civil government and the principles of Christianity. So much for the separation of church and state. John Quincy Adams knew what we know, and that is that God blesses a nation. Psalms 33, 12. 
God blesses the nation whose God is the Lord. But did you know, on the other hand, let me add this. God curses the nation who turns away from him. Psalms 9, 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Beloved, we ought to be thankful that God works as a guiding force in the hearts of men. I'm glad he did work in my heart. I'm glad he did work in your heart. I'm glad he didn't leave me just to wander around in spiritual darkness. Let us consider for a minute the condition of a man's heart. What does God see when he looks on the inside? He sees that our hearts are darkened. Ephesians 4.18 Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. You see, some have the idea that things are not quite so bad. They live a relatively decent life They have no bad habits and they have no vices and they're really good to other people. And many even attend church on Sunday. Beloved, that does not change the condition of the heart. Self-righteousness does not give a man a ticket to heaven. The Apostle Paul wrote in Titus 3.5 that salvation is not by works of righteousness, which we have done, But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. You know, in in Proverbs 29, Solomon asks a rhetorical question. Now, a rhetorical question is a question that you don't really expect an answer to. But he asks, who can say, I've cleansed my heart, I am pure and free from sin. But then, interesting enough, he answered his own question in Ecclesiastes 7.20. His answer was, not a single person on earth is always good and never sins. The reason America is losing her greatness is because the majority of our citizens no longer understand nor practice the Christian faith. Most have forgotten what makes this country great. It is a relationship with God through Christ. Let me read to you one of my favorite prayers. In 1996, Reverend Joe Wright was asked to open a new session of the Kansas City Senate. Everyone was expecting the usual generalities. Now, a side note. A number of years ago, Senator Robert Blindu asked me to open up the Arizona session of the Senate. And I have to tell you that I prayed in generalities, much to my regret. But this is what Reverend Wright said, and I quote him, Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask your forgiveness and to seek your direction and guidance. We know your words say woe to those who call evil good. But that is exactly what we have done. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium and revised and reversed our values. He went on to say, we confess. We have ridiculed the absolute truth of your word and called it pluralism. We have worshipped other gods and called it multicultualism. We have endorsed perversion and called it alternated lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and called it lottery. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have killed our unborn and called it choice. We have shot abortionists and we called it justifiable. We have neglected to discipline our children and we called it building self-esteem. We have abused power and called it politics. We have coveted our neighbors neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. 
we have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O God, and know our hearts today. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. Guide and bless those men and women who have been sent to direct us to the center of your will. I ask in the name of the Son, the living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let me tell you, beloved, the response was immediate. A number of legislatures walked out during the prayer in protest. But in six short weeks, Central Christian Church, where Reverend Wright was pastor, logged more than 5,000 phone calls, with only 47 of those calls responding negatively. Now, understand this was 1996. No social media, no Twitter or anything like that. This was the telephone. Not only did they receive those phone calls, they received international requests for copies of this prayer from India, Africa, and Korea. I made a little play on words. Reverend Wright had it right. When he said, search us, O God, and know our hearts today. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. That's exactly what we need to do today. That's why King David said in Psalm 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So, the first of the two things we have made America great is the guiding force who works in the affairs of men and the hearts of men. Then the second one is the guiding light. Psalms 119.105, The word is a lamp to guide my feet, and a light for my path. When the pilgrims came to America, the thing they brought with them that was more important than anything else was not their supplies, it was not their tools, it was not the things that were necessary to sustain them for the days ahead. The thing of most importance to them was a copy of the Bible, the Word of God. When they came to America, they brought the vision of freedom, which is the reason they came to America. And that vision opened up to them when they opened up this book. Now, there's two things about the guiding light. First, the guiding light is a beacon for the wayward. When we need direction in life, when we are off course, the thing that brings us back to where we need to be is this precious old book. It is our beacon of life. The greatness of America has been due to the confidence men have placed in God's Word. They used it, they practiced what was in it, and they believed it, and they placed it before the American people as a guiding light of hope. We need to do that, Lord. We need to use the Bible. We need to practice what is in it. We need to believe it. In 1911, the pre-presidential campaign speech, Woodrow Wilson said, America was born a Christian nation. I'm going to repeat that. America was born a Christian nation. America was born to exemplify that devotion to the element of righteousness, which are derived from the revelations of the Holy Scriptures. He continued, Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very simple thing to ask you. I ask of every man and woman in this audience that from this night on, they will realize that part of the destiny of America lies in their daily perusal of this great book of revelations. That if they would see America free and pure, they will make their own spirits free and pure by the baptism of the Holy Scriptures. Beloved, if you're looking for direction, if you feel that your life has no meaning, I suggest you turn to this guiding light, this beacon for the wayward. Second thing is the guiding light is a blessing to the weary, the wayward and the weary. Andrew Jackson said, I believe the Bible is the best gift God ever has given to man. All the good from the Savior of the world is communicated 
to us through this book. I don't know about you, but there was a time when I often got weary. Yes? I got weary of the daily struggles in life. I got weary of trouble. I even got weary of some troublesome people. Weary of just fighting the old devil at every corner. That's why I needed this book, and I still do. This Bible is a blessing to me. When I visit people who are sick, or who are dying, or who have lost someone through death, I always read Scripture. They bring comfort. They are a blessing. Now, I want you to listen to a few verses about the Word of God. Psalms 50.10, In God will I praise His Word. In the Lord I will praise His Word. Psalms 119.16, I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your Word. Psalms 119.114, You are my refuge and my shield. Your Word is the source of my home. Hope. If you feel a little weary today, Turn to the Word. Turn to the Bible. It is a guiding light showing you God's will and bringing you God's comfort. Let me repeat my earlier statement. Our nation and its greatness is because of the men and women who had a heart for God. From the time of our forefathers came to the great land and throughout all the years of its existence, God has used Christians to move this nation. Again, the two things that have made America great are Christianity and the Bible. Now, we talked about a guiding force, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, dealing with the affairs of men, and we talked about a guiding light, the Bible, as a beacon for the wayward and a blessing to the weary. On this Fourth of July weekend, though, I would be remiss not to remember with thanksgiving all the brave men and women who have sacrificed for our freedom. And I thank God for all you out there today who have served your time in the military in order to protect and sustain the freedom. May we never forget. Also, remember the greatest sacrifice was made by Jesus Christ, who said, I come to set the captives free. Beloved, if you're not a Christian, then this morning I'm going to ask you to invite Christ into your heart. Are you ready? You just need to repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins to you. Please forgive me of all my sins. Through the precious blood, the holy blood of Jesus, I now receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then pick up the Word, pick up your Bible, and read the 14th chapter of the book of John. John 14. Now, if you're a Christian in need of guidance or in need of comfort, I want you to talk with God. He will help. So just read your Bible daily. Let us pray. Lord God, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn, grant that we and all the people of this land have the grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, beloved, and God bless America.